Well, Beautiful Forever, I suppose, is a classic example of a, a completely forgotten personality in history, literally from the footnotes. I remember I was going through a very fallow period between books and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do next. So I went and did what I usually do, sit in the library and just explore ideas, look at things. And I was looking at a collection of Victorian trials and I came across a mention of this woman called Madame Rachel. I thought that's interesting. So I went away and found a couple of other books that kind of said 10 or 15 pages briefly about this notorious con woman from the 1860s. And I thought, oh, that is a hell of a story. It's a brilliant story. But the big but, will it stack up? Is there enough material out there to tell it? And of course, the wonderful thing that so changed my life as a historian, and I think that those of many other writers like me, is digitization of newspapers and journals and magazines. Because now you can search and find a lot of news, contemporary newspaper coverage of people whose story you couldn't have written before digitization because you could never have done the amount of research needed to find the story. So in Madame Rachel's case, I entirely reconstructed her story from contemporary newspapers and magazines and I had enough for a small book. And she is the most colorful monster <laughs> I've ever written about. She's a fascinating subject and I was so thrilled and proud to get that book out there. Well, she was the most extraordinary con artist, a woman who came from nowhere, um, sold potatoes, hot potatoes in Clare Market, which was a notorious, filthy, teeming part of London at the back of the, the Old Witch. And um, through enterprise and cunning, decided to go into the cosmetics business. First of all, she was selling hair restoratives. And then she, she hit her stride at a time when women were first, first beginning to pluck up the courage and use cosmetics, albeit in secret or behind their husband's back, backs. But it was also part of the a period where women also had a bit of money and they wanted to spend money on themselves. So she kind of locked into the desire of women to look beautiful forever. And that was her very clever marketing phase. She set herself up in Bond Street, offered to make the rich and gullible ladies of high society London beautiful forever, and made a killing. And for a while got away with it, selling entirely bogus cosmetics at ridiculously inflated prices. But the hype worked. She advertised everywhere. She hyped her, her products as being from exotic, far-flung places, far as Araby and Circassia. And the, the women bought into the hype. She was a very clever self-marketer.